initially this looked like a resounding beat earnings for share grew unexpectedly revenue up some three percent hyper growth in cloud is where it's at yeah, it's a pretty strong quarter for the company, and uh, also raising the dividend certainly is going to help yeah. the stock price. What, by 26%? Um, uh, uh, yeah, a few, a few pennies, but they'll take it. Um, I, I think what's, what's interesting, though, is, is that the, the commentary around the company, one of the most interesting uh, growth stories here was their infrastructure as a service business, which grew at double-digit rates after single digits the previous quarter. What is infrastructure service? It's like Amazon Web Services, it's like Microsoft Azure, it's like Google's cloud business. So here Oracle's competing in this same space here and seeing really strong double-digit growth here of this nascent uh, business for them. And I think that's really powerful for this company. I also think it's interesting that Amazon's competing with these guys uh, on the database side. So you, you've got some so this sort of really unlikely competitor for Oracle right now in Amazon and its web services business. And I expect that to be part of the conference call uh, that's going on right now. Yeah, we're already getting some headlines out of that. Um, Sanford Katz saying that SaaS and PaaS platform as a service. GM is to trend towards 80% over time. The general margin, that's quite a high call. Let's um, take it over now to Crawford. And <coughs> any key standouts for you there? I mean, Corey really focusing in on the infrastructure services play, but where else did you think is really starting to win out? Because this is a remind ourselves, a company that you know Larry Ellison originally said, actually, I think this is a fad, this cloud thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of us are on the receiving end of questions about cloud from Larry. Um, but, the, but the bottom line is that um, I, w w what I thought was fascinating was one of Safra's opening comments, and that is that the way she models it, you know, cloud revenue will be larger than their new software license revenue uh, for the entirety of next year. So basically they're hitting that tipping point this quarter when you model it forward. So it basically says that this is now a part of the business that is moving the needle for the entire company. And you're seeing that mm. in the 3% the top line growth that, they can, that, that, they're, that they're delivering. I think that the seminal moment here is that I spend so much time talking about the four horsemen of tech, the new companies, as well as all the large cap tech companies that are struggling for relevance as we move to this new era. And I think this moment is when Oracle's making its bid that they are relevant the transformation is working and that given the high double digit bookings we're still seeing in the cloud compared to some of their competitors, this revenue story is just gonna accelerate over time. So interestingly, Oracle's gonna matter more in the future and not less. And that's, that's not a position a lot of the uh, large cap tech companies have right now and frankly, almost none of them can say. I mean, it's quite amazing, Corey, that a lot of these companies, SAP, that was left for dust when it came to cloud, along with Oracle, have made huge leaps and bounds. And it was largely to do with acquisitions, though, really. Well, yes, no, I mean, they've also built up, I think SAP may be more acquisition focused with their concur acquisition and others trying to get bigger in the, in the cloud. But... Uh, through some acquisitions, yes, trying to get there big, but I think they also recognize the cost of these companies right now make it sort of silly to try to do these acquisitions because the cloud companies are getting these huge valuations mm. that just, just now is not the time. And then and Oracle IPO it as well. <laughs> well, exactly. And I think Oracle's recognizing this and sort of saying we're going to try to build as much as we can. The NetSuite case was was an interesting one. It had a it had a, a depressed valuation. Some would say because of Larry Ellison's personal stake in the company made it less likely that anyone could buy it. So they actually were able to buy it at a lower price. Any headwinds yet to come, Crawford? Because we're just hearing from CEO saying, look, the dollar, the strong dollar, they mentioned it in their report as well, was a headwind, and they expect more of the dollar to take a hit going forward as its strength remains. But any clouds amid, amid all these silver linings? <laughs> it's a great choice of words. Um, so I think that the headwind will be um, the cost associated with continuing to acquire salespeople to continue to grow, particularly in the mid market. Um, I also think one of the most interesting stories will be the headwind they'll have less of in the future, which is why this is such an interesting company to me. And that is that, as Corey was just saying, they've been competing with Amazon. What company could actually build out the data center capacity to start to compete in the infrastructure as a service and compete in the cloud service? And that is Oracle. So you've seen their CapEx very, very high historically. Mm. That's now coming down as a percent of the total. And you're going to see that, as Sapper just said on the call, they're going to really focus on marge, gross margin expansion, discipline cost control going forward, and revenue expansion as the bookings translate into revenue. So that basically says that actually one of the headwinds they've had over the last year, they're going to have a lot less of, which is that CapEx associated with building the data centers to power their cloud. So um, that's a really exciting, another exciting moment for the company we're now seeing the payback of.